Good morning, folks. This is Homestead and Rental. Hey. Uh, we um, we were tagged by the uh, the Island Homesteader um, about probably three four weeks ago. Um, it's been a busy time for us, uh, as everyone else knows. It's middle of canning season and doing basically all the summer stuff that we all try and get done. Um, we uh, we were tagged. Um, what? are our strong points in an SHTF situation? Well, our strong points um, in a situation that is bad has already happened to us. And we are going to give you the full story on how Homestead and Rental became Homestead and Rental. Um, we thought that, you know, instead of listing everything, we would just tell you our story, how it all began. Uh, up north, we had a 1.09 acres. Um, we had a nice single wide on top of a foundation, and we had a full basement, full basement and a two-car garage with a workshop attached. So, it was it was a really it was a nice place. I mean, it needed it needed work like any other house, but it was all ours. And so I guess I'll let Tim start at the beginning, and I'll just pipe in when I feel like it. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, we had started our um, homesteading journey about four years ago um, after Helen's operation. Um, she had a brain operation nine months after we were married. Um, she had a cavernous malformation of a cranial blood vessel. Don't ask me all the terminology and what it actually means. It just means that... I have a big hole in my head. <laughs> the doctors had to uh, fix that. I have a uh, scar from here and it goes all the way down to back here. So, so we, um, we ended up going through that. Um, found out after months and months and months that a lot of the commercial foods that are out there um, were actually causing her to have more seizures. Um, and we have since found out that I am allergic to wheat, um, the GMO gluten that is in um, not only not only wheat but also corn. So. I uh, I live a corn-free diet and a wheat-reduced diet because, I mean, I can't get away with not eating wheat at all. It's in everything. Um, but we learned um, how to work with our diets, um, especially Helen's. She can't have a lot of different items, so we make everything from scratch. Um, that's why some of our videos that you've all seen are the way they are. Um, we make our own flowers. Um, she's also chemical sensitive, so we make all of our own cleaning products. And a lot of our different friends here on YouTube are the ones who make those. And we've been able to learn from all of them. We didn't have the internet up in Vermont, and one thing we have to say that's been really good about this move is having the internet available. We've learned a lot from the YouTube community that we've been able to incorporate in our own lives and it's just made it so much better. I, I make um, my own laundry soap and I use kind of a combination of what Mrs. Volpe and what Misty Shooter does, um, except I use oat soap because I like the smell of it better and um, I like the citronella aspect, you know, having dogs in the country, you know, you deal with bugs all the time. So um, I make my own cleaning spray and soon I'm going to start making my own dish soap as well. Um, it's just a matter of you know saving up the money to get the product to make what you need. Exactly. Uh, a lot of vinegar in this house even though I can't eat vinegar uh, we <laughs> clean with it. Exactly. <laughs> it always smells like pickles in our house because of the vinegar but yeah. um, so that was the start of the journey was just figuring out what we were allergic to. We started reading um, Backwoods Home. Tim always had Backwoodsmen and then we discovered Countryside, a small animal and 
Farm Journal or something yeah, like that. Whatever that is. Countryside's a great magazine. Yeah, we like it. Um, we uh, we both uh, really wanted to start gardening. Um, my family had had gardens up until I was uh, about 10, 12, um, and I hated working in them. So when we started doing it together, my, my parents were shocked. Um, but we started off uh, small the first year, and um, by the time the flood uh, came through and, and wiped out our, our property in Vermont, we had uh, seven organic uh, vegetable beds. Um, they were each uh, four by eight raised, um, a potato patch, um, 10 or 12 rhubarb plants. Oh, we missed the rhubarb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we missed that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, and we had had, uh, we had a decent, a decent size little spot. Um, we had lots and lots of plans. Um, yeah. So when that situation happened, um, the two of us were prepared. I've always been into uh, the natural um, foods that are out there, uh, always picked berries. Um, I've been into wild crafting, um, and when we uh, we started homesteading, uh, basically the the full aspect of it across the board, we started wild crafting a lot. I mean, if if it's edible and you could pick it up north, we've done it. We've eaten from it. I mean, that's how we survived for two years. Um, His uncle actually is very very. Um into mushrooms, and he actually showed us several different mushrooms that had a high protein content that didn't have any look like. There's no way you can mess it up. And last spring, actually, we we ate um, mushrooms as our protein source once the venison was gone yep. um, for at least two months. I mean, we had stir fries and mushroom chips and yep. pheasant back mushrooms, chicken, chicken of the, the woods. woods. Um, um, those were oyster. our oyster. Those were our big um, protein sources, and like Helen says, I mean, we were eating it basically um, every day, at least once a day. Mm -hmm. um, we we haven't had it easy money wise um, mm -hmm. ever. Uh, we hunt for our food. We fish for our um, our food. Um, if there's a way to get it reasonably priced, we'll buy it when we have the money. Mm. But when we don't, we make do. Right. Um, we live a very, very sustainable lifestyle here. Um, we were doing that in Vermont. And uh, for our pointers, um, what are our strong points? When the hurricane came through, and this was uh, Hurricane Irene, and it actually hit the northeast as a tropical storm. And it dumped so much water on Vermont. So fast. So fast that the granite mountainsides and everything just overflowed. Well, when the brooks overflow, the rivers overflow, you lose your places. And the only thing we can say is, is the community we lived in in Vermont, nobody died. No. The community above us, um, lost lives. I mean, people died trying to stay in their homes. Our small area, there was about a hundred families and we were all cut off together. And um, actually, the, the, the town itself, it, it was amazing. You know, the next, well, when, once the water hit our house, our neighbors said we could stay with them for the night because the roads had collapsed on either side. It was probably about a mile on each side, on each of, side us. of us that with, with 100 families in the middle and um, several of the families had to evacuate not just us um, some spent the night at town hall um, other people you know put people up and then in the next morning um, the guys who had ATVs were kind of trying to circle the area see if there was a way in there was a way out um, Helen has nursing experience uh, in another lady um, was also an RN. Um, right. So we set up a triage station at our place. Um, like I said, we've always been semi-prepared for that kind of thing. Um, had some medical supplies on hand. 
could have taken care of the easy stuff. Right. Um, so, I mean, we were we were ready for that. Um, we had go bags ready. Yep. When the fire department came in, they said it was going to be a one-shot deal. You either stayed or you left. They didn't know how long it would be before things got settled so that people could go back to their houses. And so even though we were prepared, we weren't as prepared as we had hoped. And with my medical condition, I do I do require a CPAP at night, and so uh, we had no electrical electrical source. Um, you know, we have been looking into solar, but I, we just couldn't afford it. And even here in in North Carolina, hopefully at some point I'll get some you know those little small ones and somehow be able to hook it up to my CPAP because I know in the winter time they get a lot of ice storms here. So we want to be prepared. Um, more so, than, more we so than we were up there because, um, yeah, it was a one-shot deal. They put a ladder, um, a ladder truck at one side of the big hole where the river was going through and put the ladder up and over. And because the concrete bridge was actually yeah, was no longer there. It was, it, it was gone. It had washed out the abutments underneath it and the bridge had actually collapsed. Yeah. And it was fun. It was a one shot deal. People had to make that decision. And, and um, a lot of people stayed, and I give them a lot of credit. It was just that we didn't know how long it was going to be. And the longer I go without my CPAP machine, the worse, the worse I get. Her. I get. I get very confused. I, I can't make decisions. I, I can't function. I, can't, I start to not be able to cook. It's, it's just really bad. So we made the decision to leave. And. Um, we had to go up in the cherry picker, and I'm I'm really afraid of heights, and it was really scary because they they brought us up, and then we had to go over the rushing river, and as we were going, the road was continuing to collapse, and we I think were, we were the second or second, second to last second people, second to last group to actually leave, because after that they, the ground was too it wasn't stable enough for the truck, and they had to move the fire truck, so that was I mean that in itself was really scary. We were able to get to a friend's house. We had go bags packed. We had um, yeah, we were ready to go. <laughs> we had stuff ready. Um, our medicines. Uh, we had uh, a small amount of clothes, a small amount of food. Um, we didn't know what it was like out past uh, our caved-in bridge across the river. We actually thought we were going simply to uh, a friend of ours who was on higher ground, and she still had uh, the ability to cook. And so about five of us went there. And from there, and we, then from there we discovered to frog to our, we could get our, out. our family's house. Yeah, so... Um, I mean, it, it is hard because, I mean, you, you think about things like Katrina. You think about people right. that were stuck for weeks. We did try um, to, when we could get back in, we did try to see about making our home rehabitable. Um, the water had done terrible damage to not only the property itself, um, but it was everything we had done and worked for was gone. Yeah. And it's hard to start over with a pickup load of stuff. Um, when we came to North Carolina, we had nothing. Yeah. Um, so we stayed with uh, my in-laws for um, a month and a half, mm -hmm. um, we found ourselves this cute little rental, um, and we started over. I mean, if you can see our little place, um, it isn't much. It's four rooms, um, but it's got a great backyard. Um, our we, landlord we have doesn't a great landlord doesn't mind that we garden. Um, yep. She's never said anything about the rabbits. We're going to be getting chickens in the next two weeks. Um, with my next paycheck. Um, and that comes to our next point. Money. <laughs> you need money to be able to buy food, to yeah. buy gasoline, to buy the items and things you need. Um, and we didn't have any. Yeah, when um, you have to replace an entire household, you, you're, you'd be amazed at the expense. And we didn't get any money um, from FEMA. We got enough well, to get down here. Um, right. We got enough to drive our truck down here. Um, and basically, we, we started over here. 
Um, in the state of Vermont, you don't have flood insurance unless you live on a floodplain. Which we didn't. We didn't. Um, <laughs> they have now rewritten some of the boundaries for floodplains because there are new yeah. floodplains now. What a um, man. And it, it, it is bad still there. Um, when we came here, we didn't have anything. We had a dresser, um, two nightstands um, that were basically family um, heirloom items and uh, some clothes and I think our canner and that was basically it. The canner, yeah, the canner was upstairs and the dehydrator yep. was the, upstairs. The rest of our preps were, were all downstairs. downstairs in our setup. We had a very large freezer um, and then a full setup um, to cut, process our own animals, um, to do our own canning, everything we could do downstairs. The only thing I hadn't bought was another stove to do that in. And Which we, we had <laughs> plans on doing that. Right. Um, and we lost all of that. So, I mean, we lost five years, four years of preps, of items that we had done. All of our canning jars were down there and they they were no good after that because of the amount of bacteria and everything that the uh, federal government actually stated that anything that was a food storage item would need to be destroyed if it had been in that contaminated water because it, it hadn't just sat there um, for a couple of hours. I mean, we're talking it was days and weeks before, I mean, we could get everything all cleaned out. Um, so we basically, when we got to North Carolina, we started over with a ball canner and a Presto pressure cooker, uh, pressure canner. And we started getting all of our own um, items again uh, at auctions, at flea markets. Um, we bought and sold items to make gas money when we first got here. I've been here six months. I just got a job a month ago at right. the local Walmart um, for minimum wage. So, so you do what you have to do. You do I what mean, you have to to keep going. And we and work well as a team. I think, you know, it, it, um, there are things that you have to just not have anymore. And it's okay. You know, I mean, you just deal with it. I mean, I cut his hair. That's why it looks like it does. I mean, it's just stuff like that, you know. And and then we try to make a little extra here and there. I like to do crafts. Um, I make pot holders and um, I've been making aprons <laughs> and um, other other things. What else do I make? Oh, quilt. I make baby quilts. She and, does baby know, quilts. Little things she like does that. That kind of thing. I make primitive um, wooden spoons. Just started that as a project um, not long ago, and um, they are very primitive, but we think that they might be able to sell. If they don't, they're at least fun to make, yep. and I mean, great gifts for friends, family, right. um, that kind of thing. As you can see by our wall, we love cast iron. We, yep, we, we recondition it, we buy it, we sell it, we use it. And yes, I have used that. <laughs> she does. I use do have a washing machine now, but I have used that. Her. So. <laughs> You know, you just you just do what you have to do, and um, so this is kind of just we wanted to just give you the kind of the whole spiel. Yeah. Probably a long video. We apologize, but we just wanted you all to kind of know where we were coming from. And how <laughs> Homestead Norrell became Homestead, Homestead Norrell. Norrell. <laughs> I mean. But we've learned valuable lessons from the different preppers. Of we do put away. We put, we do we put away. We've learned um, more about herbs, more about. Um, a water, water. Clip, you know, water purification, just things that we are learned from the prepper community that has helped us so much on our homestead. And even though we're nowhere near where, where they, they are, are, I mean, we have just learned so much, and we really, really appreciate this community because pretty much anybody you PM or email and you ask mm -hmm. them a question, they they get right back to you because it's just just a very kind, caring community, and we're really glad to be, really happy to be part of it. Yep. And we're as prepared as we can be within our monetary, you know, means. So if, if, if you think about it and you grow your own animals, you 
which we do. We have our own rabbits, and we're working on the chickens. Mm -hmm. um, if you do your own gardening, I mean, you can consider yourself a prepper, or you can consider yourself a homesteader, and welcome to the group. Yeah. Um, we don't consider ourselves preppers, but there are preppers out there that don't consider themselves homesteaders. Um, and then there's survivalists. I mean, there's so many different labels, but really, all in all, as a group, we're just a bunch of just real people, and we we love everybody. We really thank everybody for all the help. That's Trip King. Oh yeah, we uh we are actually Hang doing. Hang on one second. Listen to him while I attend to my canning. We are actually canning as uh as we're doing this. Um, we. Try and freeze everything we can, can everything we can, and dehydrate everything that we can possibly do. Um, we do as much of it ourselves as possible. We got a, a dehydrator um, very cheaply uh, a, a long time ago, and um, it was one of the few items that had actually been on a top shelf that didn't get knocked over. Um, in Irene, so we were quite happy to be able to take that with us. And I'm um, pretty proud of these string beans. This is my first time. This is the first time we've actually done string beans. Um, she's got I think ten, ten pints. Yep, ten um, pints. And um, they're still going, growing. We're we're just doing our own little thing here. Um, so for those pints that uh, Homestead. Uh, Island, Home, Island Homesteader, a uh, fellow North Carolinian, um, was actually talking about. Um, one, when that issue happened, the SHTF happened, we were ready to go. Um, we were prepared. Um, we are working on being more prepared for the next time. Do we think that there's going to be more issues, more problems? Absolutely. Most definitely. Um, and you just need to be in a mindset that um, you can get through it, just like Goat Hollow says. And I mean, just do what you got to to keep going. That's that's our attitude. I mean, you stop. Also, too, I mean, just a point from the peanut gallery here. Um, there comes a time when you have to be prepared to realize that your life and your family is way more important than any of the things that you have. Oh yeah. And I mean, we grabbed our birth certificates, licenses, and wedding rings. I mean. We, we, we had the dogs, um, some of their food, and a few items for ourselves right. to eat. You know, we were basically. A couple, couple pairs of underwear and, and, yeah, and that was it. You know, we had them in our go bag and yeah, we, that was that. I mean, at that point, we honestly didn't even know I mean, we didn't know how bad it was going to get, and, you know, when we left, we said, okay, well, if looting happens, which it didn't, but if looting happens, oh, well, you know, whatever is there, whatever. Um, we, le we left everything, um, that was the, just what the we tools, did. Um, the few firearms that were in the house, um, they were locked up, but, I mean, somebody who really wants to get into something yep. will do it. Yeah. Um, we didn't lose a thing. Um, nope. The neighbors were great. They were wonderful. They um, started a community watch. I mean, there's. The as soon as we could get back in, I did, and uh, was able to start getting uh, some of our items that we could save out. Um, and we tried to do what we could. Um, it just it wasn't in the cards. There really wasn't anything left for us to do um, that way, which is hard. That was ten years of. Um, blood, sweat, tears, 60 hour work weeks in a factory to uh, lose it all in 45 minutes. But um, we are here now. Um, we have new plans, better plans, bigger plans. Um, we've learned a lot about ourselves in the past um, year, also, not even a year. Um, no, it hasn't even been a year yet. Oh my god. <laughs> big points. Um, one, we were ready to go. Yeah. Um, and that was our mindset. Um, I know there's a lot of people that are like, you know what, I'm going to bug in, I'm going to stay if there's a, a, a problem. That's what we thought. 
<laughs> yeah. We thought we, we could. thought we were bugging in. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. <laughs> we ended up having to go because the brook next to us ended up putting six feet of water up over our place. I mean, um, and I think that's the most important thing to remember is that you, you don't a, know what's going to happen. You so. need a second and a third plan. Yep. <laughs> um, I actually was on probably plan three or four <laughs> yeah. making it up on, as we went we because were. the water kept going higher and higher and the high ground kept getting smaller and smaller on both sides of us because the water had backed up that much that quick. Yeah, we were gonna, we actually, we were gonna just go as far as the four wheel drive would take us up the mountain up and then the we mountain. were gonna just um, and continue just to go up the mountain if we had to. Keep going if we had to. Uh, so that, that's our first one. Um, our second point, we hunt, we fish, we gather wild edibles, we garden, we raise our own meat when possible. Um, we can, we freeze, we dehydrate, um, we do make our own cleaning products. Um, we love to read about this lifestyle as well. And I think the years that we were kind of on the fence of whether we were going to live this way or not, and we did all that reading, really came in handy. I and mean, we were remembering things like, oh, you know, we could do this. And, oh, remember when we read that article and we could do that. and. And I really think that that's important to just edu educate yourself as much as possible. As much as possible. Take Even free classes. I'm going to a free class at the library next week on, on medicinal herbs. I mean, mm -hmm. it's like find, a, find stuff in your community and take advantage of it because you just never know when you might need it. And we, I, Check I, I mean, out within driving range of where you are Right. Um, for places to go um areas we're not too far away from Cherokee and, and that's that's where I was heading with that oh sorry and there are classes everywhere whether it's at your local extension office um whether it's at your local library or even the local university we took a university class on sustainable um wild crafting yeah, we went to a seminar. It was we, really neat. we were starting to do the wild crafting on our own with my uncle, but we got to go to this course. Later on, we actually met the wild crafters in our own wild crafting backyard, and they actually apologized for picking in our area. And we're like, no, you're the ones who were teaching us. <laughs> it was really neat. So, I mean, it's it's a great community to be part of, and... I mean, that's one of the big things that we try and do. Um, we don't have a whole lot of money, so that takes me to point three. Um, we are working at trying to have a sustainable lifestyle. Um, we pay with cash for everything. Um, we haven't used a credit card in, well, since before the, uh, the flood happened. And we haven't used one since then. Everything's been cash. Everything's been when we actually had the money to buy it. Um, all the cast iron here was bought down here. Um, I've bought and sold many, many iron pans. Um, I refurbish them, clean them, and resell them. Um, I don't make a whole lot on it, but we make some. Um, my wife has her own upgraded... Um, version um, of this same wall on the other wall here. All of those pans are pans that have, are between 60 and 100 years old and that's all we use is cast iron. Um, if we can't afford it, we don't get it. Um, if you're thinking about buying a water purifier but you're going to have to put it on credit, why not wait another month or two and buy it with cash? Or that, six, in that, our case, or six. Yeah, or six in our case. <laughs> We're still saving up for that yeah. water purification because we really do want to get uh, a, a good a one. A decent one. Um, so, so, until then. Until then, um, and that actually leads into the next one with the cast iron of business. Um, some of you have seen my new videos, uh, making a little extra money. Um, we're going to do a video at least once a week. Um until I run out of ideas. And if any of you YouTube viewers have an idea that I haven't done, 
give me a PL. Yeah, let us know. Um, we'll try it, it. If it's legal, um, we have done everything you can think of legally to make money down here. I've scrapped metal. I did that in Vermont. I have bought items at flea markets, resold them at flea markets, bought items at auctions, Resold them at auctions, resold them at flea markets, bought stuff, and then resold it online. Um, Helen has done her crafts, um, and there are many of them that, I mean, we, we're not even thinking about, and we've actually bought it or sold it. Um, anything that we can do that will put a dollar on the table to put into the gas tank, or for food. And that's really what we're we're doing with it. I and mean, we're not we're not even at the point yet where we can save. We're at we're just getting to the point where um we're actually able to have, have money, you know, that for need. everything. So we're kinda we're kinda at that point now and um we're trying to I, Get to the point where it's not having to be used for food. <laughs> uh, uh, our four strong points then are we've been through been through the SHTF situation. <laughs> um, we can do it again if we have to. Um, we can grow our own food. We can hunt, harvest. Um, we are trying to be as sustainable as possible. Mm -hmm. And four, um, business. If you can make a dollar off from a penny, do it. If you can make five dollars off from a dollar item, do it. Put it away. Mm -hmm. Use it for something that you need later. There's no reason to go to McDonald's and buy dinner when you've got a little bit of beef jerky or venison jerky, depending on the season, all made up. Eat that. Save that cash for something you really need. Because you never know when that problem could hit you. Mm -hmm. um, we thought we were just doing our own thing, and we ended up down here doing something completely different. So we hope that this answers Island homesteaders questions of what our strengths are, but we also want to sort of just let the community in and let them know um, our, whole story. our whole story, and not only our whole story, but how much they've helped us. It's um, It's been a wonderful journey so far, and we're going to just continue yep. because we've made some really great friends, and, um, and we really appreciate all the feedback that we get. Um, we have gotten a couple of negatives, so, you know, hey. To each his own, but yep. but um, we, we just surpassed our hundred uh, our hundred subscriber. Yep, we're um, gonna we're gonna wait and we're gonna do a contest at 250. So That's our the, goal. The quicker we get that 250, the quicker we actually put some items out there um, for people to win. Um, I'm actually thinking about doing a cast iron pan giveaway. Um, and then possibly. I'll probably throw in like a you know a couple of my powders or something. Yeah, powder. Or, you know, do a do like a little you know homestead and Arena cooking package for our 250th. So um, you know if you're kind of just watching us but you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. We yep. we try to um, answer every message and yep. we. As the other people say in all their videos, like us. Subscribe to us. That's right. Leave us feedback. Sure. We want to know all your homesteading, prepping, surviving, woodscraft, whatever it is. We want to know about it. We want to see your videos too. Because um, we're learning from you, and we hope that somebody is learning something from us. Because I mean, we went through this for a reason, so we hope that somehow yeah. we're. Helping somebody somewhere. And Island Homesteader tagged three different people, um, and I think he was tagged by the tagged by the real Virginia Wind, and 
he tagged three different people. Well, I'm not going to tag anyone. I want all of our viewers to consider themselves being tagged. Um, we would like to have you all do um, videos on what you think your strong points are if we came to an SHTF situation. Um, so consider yourself all tagged. Um, I think that's it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is Homestead and Rental. Greetings from North Carolina.